Hello and thanks for joining me. In this video, I take a look at my personal favourite way of setting up a virtual camera rig. So in this video, I'm just going to go through how I like to have my virtual cameras set up. Um, this just comes from years of experience working within a camera rig. Uh, a lot of people all have their own ways of doing this, and in a studio, they'll have their own way of having the, you know, their preferences as well. But if I've got full control of everything, this is the way I like to have my camera rig set up so it can then pass through a pipeline and work fluently and effectively for revisions and changes. I work predominantly in Maya. Maya is the industry standard software that's been in feature films. Uh, there's, there are so many different ways of actually setting this up now, but the principle of the way this is set up uh, will work in any software. Now, a lot of artists are quite happy just to grab a generic camera and move that around within the scene and do everything they need to with that, which is fine. It does the job well and it'll get you something quick and easy and it'll pass down a pipeline really easily. Now the thing I've got with just having a generic camera is when it comes back to refining and polishing or any complex moves, a single camera just by itself with no additional controls or anything on it can be hard then to refine later when you come back as you iterate your changes or change things that come further on. So. A single camera does everything that you need, but in a pipeline or in a production pipeline, uh, it's not my preferred option. My preferred option consists of a rig. So I like to use a whole rig setup, which consists of, when you expand it all out, quite a lot of nodes. Now inside this, there's a reason behind all these nodes and why I use these extra nodes, which is what this video is going to be going through. I got to, to start off with, right down the bottom here, we've actually got the camera itself. Now the camera itself is just whatever generic normal camera or any camera which the studio has got, is does want to use. It's got all its uh, film back and everything set up. Uh, the best thing to do is to, when you have a scene, is not to start off with a clean camera, but actually import a camera into the scene so that you've always got your camera settings uh, that are used within the production line, to have them all baked into a particular single file which you then import into every scene you're using. That way it's all consistent throughout the whole episode or throughout the whole production. Because you always need to have all those details set out and they are usually defined from the start about what it is going to be. Or if there's any changes which happen throughout production, if you've only got that one single camera file that's referenced in, that means you can change that one file and it'll filter throughout the whole production. But that's mainly for things like film back, film gate, um, or color space. All that stuff can be baked into this single file to start off with. The first node down underneath the camera is actually what I call the focal distance. This travels with the camera and is driven by the camera's direction, but it's nice to be able to visually see where your depth of field is going to be. So I like to use a locator for that. I usually change my locator to a different color. I've got it at light, bright blue at the moment, but it's hidden right down, it's right down at the bottom. This node, you can see that being purple is then being driven by an expression which is the length of distance from this. It's the, this node translate Z distance is what is then driving the depth of field of the camera in the attribute. Focal distance 12.3, this one is now 12.3. So you can also then lock the locator to a object which is going through your scene to animate. So you can lock it down so your focal distance stays with a character. If a character's walking around the scene and you wanna keep him in focus, you could constrain it to say the head constraint or something of the character and your focal distance will always stay with him and then you can bake it out and send it down the train. The next note I wanna talk about is just the root control. If I like to use my camera rig as set up like a tripod, and this particular control is then what I'd use as my tripod. I could move it around the scene and I can set it up on the ground to be facing in the direction that the camera needs to be facing. It's, a all, it's an all fun function moves everything node. On top of that, I have an extra node or my position control. The main reason I like to have that underneath my, the main reason I like to have that underneath my 
uh, root control is you can face your root in a direction. And if you want to go for a, a direct move from this, like if you want to just travel straight in, like have a zoom straight into the camera, with this control then, you've still only got it on one angle. So if we look at it in an object mode, we're only traveling, traveling on our translate Z axis still. And it's only gives you that one arc uh, to then edit. If you don't do that, if I don't have that, then my world node here, if I key this, is then gonna be traveling along two or two different axes, which just makes it harder to then figure out what your camera's doing. If you're looking in your graph editor, you'll have two different art. Well, actually, let's, let's have a look at it. We'll have a look at, so if we've got it this way, we'll see that, so in my graph editor, if I just want a nice straight camera's push straight in, if I just use my world control and it's tilted off, I've got to travel in two different directions. But what I can do then to edit, to make it cleaner, I can just gra grab my second node, which is facing in the right direction already, and just push it in on the one axis. Then I've only got, then in my graph editor, if I want to edit it, edit it, I've only got one curve to be working with. The thing with working with a camera is to actually plan out exactly what the camera is going to be doing beforehand. So you uh, assess the action you're going to do. Because then once you've actually got your uh, a clear idea in your head about what your camera is going to do, you can make it really clean and simple uh, to work with within your scene. Complex moves can really should be broken down to only two or three different arcs to work on. So on my, on my camera position node, which does really well for tracking this way and just sideways uh, compared to where it is set on the tripod, I've also then got a rotation node or an extra node to be able to help with. These are good if you're just, uh, once you've got your camera set up and you've got your movement set on it, if you wanna give you your, so, uh, a dynamic tilt or you're trying to just give some expression to your camera, you can, you've got uh, an extra node on top of it to just give it a bit of a tilt uh, if you want your lines in the scene to look a bit different. Now on top of all of that as well, uh, to, keep my, to, to keep this all broken off, I've also always have extra nodes hidden here which are linked to the uh, control below them. Um, this just comes back to if as you get animating and you're making more and more complex moves and the director goes, oh I just want a little bit of a move on this but you've already got lots of motion, motion on something. Like if a director goes, oh, can we just push in a little bit, but you've animated all these controls and there's keys on all of them and you don't want to go into your graph editor. Let's actually just set something up so I can put the, make it at least obvious what I'm talking about here. There we go. All right. So the reason for all those extra groups we can see, which I've got in here, is when we get to the point of, oh my God, we've got everything animated. We've got movement on the root control as we see that it's traveling around an object. We've got movement on our position control as we're trucking in to get closer to our object. It moves in, we can see that there. And we've got movement on our... Uh, distance helper so that we say it stays locked on the object we're actually focusing on. We get a count, uh, what looks like a fairly nice complex move like that. But still then the director comes back to you and goes, oh, we need to change the lens so that it looks different. This is not really nice. This is not the way I want it. Go do something better. We've got the ability to inside what we've inside everything that we've got here. If he just says something like that and goes, okay, let's change the lens to this. Well, we're outside what we need now. We can't see the nice line we had to start off with, which was splitting the uh, splitting the whole scene. He just wants to get closer to this. We actually have like an extra group above it where we can do small tweaks. There we go. With the fucking dog still barking in the background. 
So the key things that I like about having a rig set up is you can break apart all the motion that your camera's doing to have it all clean in your out in your graph editor. So you can have one control doing one motion, which in this example, we've got the root control just doing a little rotation around its object. You can have your uh, you can have the position control doing another thing where it's actually just trucking in to create uh, just to make it moving and you can have your camera roll as well doing something completely different like if you want for this one I don't use that much at all but if the directors asking for some characteristic tilts you've still got the control over top of that to be able to tilt roll the camera around and not make it too un out of the ordinary to be able to then edit it inside your graph editor. In most post pipelines that you work with anyway, the rig outside the camera is gonna be blown away and it's not going to affect anything. What, they, what the pipeline's really gonna want is just the camera itself. So I like to have all these controls split up so it's clean for me to be able to edit afterwards. And update as needed because even after everything's gone through you might get the director going okay it's time for doing some camera polish now that the animator's gone through and and move things about as well if there's a rig there it makes it really clean and simple to then go oh, i just need to pull it back just a little bit and in the next video i'm going to show you a working example of how this rig in a complex scene is very helpful so until then Bye-bye.